uh, get underway here. Again, welcome to everyone. Uh, the session um, is uh, titled 10 Critical Capabilities of a WMS. And uh, this is the lead off session for a new masterclass series titled Warehouse Technology Excellence, brought to you by Kerber Supply Chain. Uh, we're joined by uh, Mr. Sean Elliott, who is the Global Chief Technology Officer uh, for Kerber Supply Chain. I'm your host, uh, Tom Goldsby, and uh, I'm the uh, Haslam Chair of Logistics at the University of Tennessee. I also serve as the co-editor-in-chief of the Journal of Business Logistics. Uh, Sean uh, is the CTO of Kerber Supply Chain. He's got a 15-year history with uh, serving as the principal architect of the Kerber Supply Chain High Jump One platform and the technological convergence strategy at Kerber Supply Chain. Earlier in Sean's career, he served as the uh, at the architecture group uh, at Infor, uh, where he focused on distribution-centric supply chain. Sean has a passion for bringing leading edge mobility technologies to the supply chain and enhancing end user experience within Kerber supply chain customer community. And Sean, we welcome you today, and I'm gonna hand things over to you in just a few minutes, but do allow me to go over a few things for our audience before we jump into today's comments. Uh, again, today is the lead-off session in a masterclass series titled Warehouse Technology Excellence. And you see that we're going to be in a Tuesday-Thursday cadence. Perhaps some of you attended previous masterclass uh, sessions that you see are available on demand in case you did miss uh, our previous two masterclasses on addressing labor challenges and cold storage trends by virtue of registering for today's a session, you will have access not only to today's session on demand at a later time for subsequent viewing, but also uh, the previous masterclass series. Uh, if you're new to us, however, you might be wondering why are we here? What's the purpose of the masterclass? And it's all about tackling the challenges of today's increasingly complex supply chain, bringing you best practices and innovative thinking from academics like myself and industry insiders and senior leaders like Sean. What we're trying to accomplish, well, we want to provide guidance and insights to help you manage your supply chain, perhaps creating a competitive advantage, a strategic asset for your organization, an opportunity to excel, and ultimately conquer that supply chain complexity. So we welcome you to today's session and also encourage you to join us in subsequent class sessions over the next two and a half weeks. So let's go over a few housekeeping items. All of your phone lines are muted. Uh, as indicated, we are recording today's session and you'll have access to the recording as well as the slides uh, within 48 hours uh, via an email invitation that we'll send out. Uh, I do encourage you to submit your questions uh, for uh, Sean and you may submit those questions at any time. Just go to the GoToWebinar uh, tab in your menu and you can submit a question at any time during the presentation. Also, I do want to direct your attention to the handout that's available. Again, today's handout is an industry report provided by Kerber Supply Chain titled Delivering Flexibility in an Ever-Moving Market, WMS Enhancing Adaptability and Integration. Uh, the marketing crew at Kerber is always great at providing us with very timely reports that go right along with our sessions, and today uh, is no different. So thanks for providing that white paper that's uh, free and readily available to you. Just all you need to do is click on the handouts tab. So with that, uh, let's take a look at today's poll question, uh, which asks, how confident do you feel to handle complexity in your supply chain? And uh, I do want to meet those of you that indicated 20, uh, the 20 percent that indicated that you're completely confident um, because I myself don't feel that way. And I could use uh, a little boost of confidence, maybe uh, interacting with the likes of yourselves could help. The, the most common response at 35% was fairly confident, followed by somewhat confident at 29%, and then our uh, supremely confident folks indicated that at, at 20%, and then slightly confident at 12%, and not confident at all, 4%. Uh, I might have identified with that one myself. So, hey, that's a great pulse read on how you feel coming into this session, and perhaps we can 
maybe advance your confidence a little bit through wisdom, the wisdom that we're gonna provide in today's session. So why don't we go ahead and get that started and we'll transition to the presentation. And uh, again, I'm gonna frame the conversation with just some, some uh, quick observations and comments here about what we expect from our warehouses. And I think that this is a pretty fundamental uh, level uh, a question to ask about what we expect. I think we all, regardless of the nature of our businesses, expect our warehouses to be productivity, uh, to have high productivity, high quality, and certainly to look after the safety of our team members, as well as uh, our customers and, and those with whom we interact, uh, interface with in the warehouse. And I think these are timeless principles. Uh, we're always seeking more across uh, each of these three. We do not expect or or wish for any trade-offs amongst these three principles. And I think Sean, uh, in talking about WMS, is gonna help us to understand how WMS can advance our productivity, quality, and safety um, opportunities. Well, another principle that we've been talking about for a couple of decades now in the warehouse is the notion of the perfect order. And the perfect order succinctly is defined as delivering uh, complete and consistent with the customer's expectations. Uh, it's on time, again, to the customer's expectations. It's damage free and also with the correct documentation and, and invoice. And, and some might argue that it involves more than these four elements, uh, but you get the point that uh, these are the fundamentals, again, of the perfect order. Uh, it calls for perfect execution before, during, and after the order build and delivery. And while it's tough to pull off once, the real challenge is to try to do it order after order, day after day. And there are certainly many hurdles that get in the way of achieving the perfect order. And I've referred to these as perfect order breakers. And I have a list of those, uh, as you see here. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list by any means. Any number of things can go wrong in trying to fulfill the perfect order. But WMS holds the promise of preventing and detecting these pitfalls and hopefully before the problems land in the lap of our customers. And today's complexity and time crunches only add to the potential for order defects. So with that, Sean, just a little bit of background here about the fundamentals of what we expect in our warehouse and, and the notion of the perfect order and how we want to try to achieve the perfect order. Uh, again, order after order, but also day after day. Uh, you've promised to share with us the critical capabilities of today's WMS technology. How can we fulfill the promise of the perfect order time and again with the aid of WMS? Thank you very much, Tom. I think that's, as, as uh, you indicated, a, a critical topic as we think to both the, the problems of today, but also the opportunities of tomorrow. Uh, the truth is that the most valuable customer that we have is the customer that not only ordered from us today, but the customer that orders from us tomorrow. And what that requires is a happy customer, a satisfied customer, and one uh, hopefully that time and again receives the perfect order, an order that was delivered complete, an order that was delivered on time, an order that was high quality, and an order that they can rely was delivered in a safe environment where their, uh, their, their, their supply chain members were not damaged or hurt themselves uh, to deliver that perfect order. But the truth of the matter is when we talk about supply chain complexity, some of those measurements or the definition of, of the topics that you described just a moment ago are what is challenging us the most. The topic of productivity is changing as, as we think about the future. As we look at, uh, again, maybe in very, very modern times, the impact that COVID uh, and coronavirus are having on online orders versus in-store orders and the volume of, of direct to, to home fulfillment. As a result, the, the challenge of reverse logistics is becoming more and more a pressing issue and is challenging us to rethink the way that we not only protect but optimize productivity. Uh, quality is, is uh, increasingly uh, a differentiated topic. It used to be that we measured as an industry quality out the door. How was the parcel or the box or the pallet uh, when it left our dock? 
Now we're responsible. Our brand is at stake every time it's damaged, not out the door, but by the time it gets to the door. When the ultimate consumer receives that package or our business to business customer receives the pallet and it's been damaged in transit, the transportation carrier may carry a bit of liability on that, but the brand reputation that's really damaged is ours. The complexity that those observations create is something that we as an industry have to deal with. We have to be equipped to deal with, and it's shaping the way that we think about the modern warehouse management solution and the critical capabilities that are delivered by that WMS to satisfy not only the internal requirements of our business, but also the external expectations of our consumer. Whether that is a business to consumer, B2C uh, type of an operation that we're talking about, or whether we're making fulfillments on a more case or pallet level to other businesses within a distribution network. These capabilities are focused on a variety of facets of our business. Some very much uh, address issues and topics within our IT community and how IT transitions from maybe an infrastructure support organization and is increasingly focused on value creation for the operational organization itself. Some of our capabilities really do focus very directly uh, on the operational community within a business, whether that is more of the managerial uh, group that is focused on planning and oversight, or whether it's the floor worker that is really focused on day-to-day -day operations and how they can perform their job with excellence, but also with excitement and engagement. Or whether that, that community is really the end consumer, the partner community or other ecosystem participants within our broader supply chain and how the WMS increasingly can pivot from being purely an operational platform meant to be focused on an internal community and, and actually participate in the value creation for that end consumer, for that partner ecosystem and play a critical role in connecting the end to end supply chain to create value for all participants. Maybe we can dive in and talk about the first of those communities, the IT community. When we talk about a warehouse management solution, there's one thing that's quite clear. Uh, WMS is not an investment that's made uh, for simply the future. A WMS is a, a project and it's a solution focused on, on creating value. It's a platform for value creation within a business. Some may measure that in terms of return on investment or total cost of ownership. Some may look at it in terms of productivity as you described where the, the real measurement of success is focused on cost per unit or cost per, per case and, or, or throughput and the number of units or cases or pallets I can produce uh, within an outbound material flow on a daily basis. But everybody looks at a warehouse management solution as a vehicle through which they can ensure compliance, they can ensure safety, they can ensure quality or improve quality, and ultimately measured by the productivity of, of an operation. In the modern world, though, that, that, that WMS has a few new requirements, things that we might not have seen as much 10 years ago, but that really align again with the complexity of today's supply chain and the opportunities that we expect that supply chain to unlock tomorrow. The first of those capabilities is, is the, this thing we think of as adaptability, or maybe said in a different uh, way, the ability of the WMS to create a nimble environment for today's supply chain. The reality is requirements are changing all the time. We didn't expect in January that most of us would be working from home. WMS has had to support that. We didn't expect in January that most of our consumers would be increasingly buying online and returning via UPS, FedEx, DHL, or, or the like. An adaptable WMS, a WMS that empowers either an operational community within our, 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 our user base or the IT community is required to support what I think of as a continuous improvement program uh, uh, to enable that WMS no longer to be a 10, 15, 20 year fixture of our operation, but a very stable IT enterprise platform that is continuously evolving, adapting to the changing market conditions, to changing business requirements, and that is empowering the customer themselves, the user themselves, or again, the IT operation within that, that user community to understand the new requirements that are evolving into the, the DNA of a business and to take quick action to improve the capabilities of the warehouse management solution itself to support the evolving landscape of the supply chain. To do that, that requires that that community is less focused on maybe more traditional IT uh, topics like infrastructure support 
What we see in the market a lot these days is that the adoption of cloud is becoming not only um, uh, an interesting topic, but it's becoming the de facto, the, the standard by which we think of warehouse management solutions. The reason for that, I suppose, at one level is a cost topic, the discussion of capital investment versus operational investment. But the truth is, it's really about unlocking potential. It's about creating a new value driver and vehicle in the IT organization by enabling IT to focus less on servers, on virtual machines, and the more traditional infrastructure topics by, by leveraging cloud capabilities to really focus in on the value drivers of operational support and going back to that point on adaptability by leveraging the technologies at their disposal to continuously facilitate the improvement of day-to-day -day operations and unlock the evolutionary capabilities of a business to understand what's going on in their market and to support those changing requirements in real time. The final truth as a value platform though, is that WMSs don't live in a vacuum. Uh, WMSs are meant to support the four walls of a warehouse and maybe that, that strip that surrounds it, the yard and the workforce via labor management and other key capabilities. Uh, but they're also meant to integrate seamlessly into an ecosystem of line of business applications and to support connectivity in many cases to third party communities. The, the truth is integration is one of the oldest business challenges that we've been working as an industry to solve and yet it's still a business challenge. Uh, integration continues to be one of the key drivers for value or for lack of value uh, in a WMS project. And as we look at supply chains, it continues to be one of the key drivers for growth or one of the key inhibitors in our customer base. The reason for that's very simple. WMSs are better when they understand more deeply what's going on in the transportation world. So deep integration into parcel manifesting or transportation management creates new potential for value. WMSs may not drive all of the EDI transaction flow necessary to complete an end-to-end -end order cycle, but they can support key elements of that EDI transaction, uh, like an ASN, uh, for example, or a receipt notice. Those seem very simple, but again, they continue to prove challenging for today's uh, market. And as, a, as a, a, a kind of a conclusion, it continues to therefore be a critical capability as we see uh, market participants evaluate WMS technologies, how well can that warehouse management support not only the functional requirements I have, but how well can it coexist and integrate into the broader ecosystem of applications and requirements that I have as an organization. But the truth is a WMS is not just uh, a value creator, it's also an operational enabler. When we think about operational enablement, we go back to many of the points that I made before. How is that WMS supporting not only the four walls of the warehouse, the picking, packing, receiving, the cycle counting, and, and, uh, and the like within the four walls, but how is it extending the boundaries, supporting automation, supporting yard and labor activities, and providing me a better foundation, not only to do the, the fundamentals, to pick, to pack, to ship, to receive and cycle count, but to extend the boundaries of the value of, of the investment I'm making, so that when we think about how we run our warehouse, we're thinking more comprehensively about how I'm analyzing the operations, how I'm supporting the operations, and how I'm connecting to the broader community that is reliant uh, on those operations. Increasingly in today's supply chain, automation is a topic that's driven in part by productivity, quality, and safety, as you mentioned. It's also driven by a macro trend that we see, which is people. People tend these days to be more challenging to find in supply chain. The workforce is increasingly scarce. As a result, we're turning to modern automation in the, the form of robotics. We're also looking at more traditional automation like uh, conveyance and sortation. What we need increasingly as a result is a warehouse management solution that doesn't just integrate to automation, but understands automation and can make better optimization decisions about how to leverage automation and how to support human workforces working in the within the boundaries of automation to provide the productivity, the quality, and the safety that you mentioned before. But we're also looking to non-physical technologies to drive the future of supply chain. And today's WMS really needs to be focused on the smart supply chain, on leveraging modern technologies like artificial intelligence and, uh, and machine learning, predictive analytics, to not only provide, again, those foundational capabilities, picking, packing, and shipping as examples, but to leverage novel technologies to provide decision support systems, to make predictive intelligence available so that when warehouse managers are trying to decide, do I ship on FedEx or DHL? 
artificial intelligence is helping them make smart decisions on that basis. When they think about, do I follow waveless operations or do I batch pick a, a particular uh, set of goods? AI is available to start making those decisions on their behalf and automating certain activities within the boundaries of a warehouse. So that as we think about the modern definition of productivity, we're leveraging technology not only to fill the gap in the physical material flow via automation, but also at the managerial level by providing better, smarter technologies that can make those managers more efficient and effective at driving an operation forward. <coughs> That's not only a day-to-day -day topic, though, where smart supply chain may be focused. It's also a planning topic. The final key capability or critical capability we look to is the ability to simulate operations. As operations change in a more dynamic and real-time fashion, our, our need to continuously evolve, as we talked about earlier, is dramatically increased. And as we think about supporting a dynamically evolving operation, we think about the topic of risk. Supply chain is traditionally a very risk averse market. And as a result, we look to simulation technologies, technologies that allow us to play a what if game. What if I increased my shifts and went from a two shift to a three shift structure? What if I relayed out my warehouse or implemented flow racking instead of uh, a tradi more traditional style of racking? What if I put AMR into my facility and, and uh, contracted with a, a goods to person or a person uh, to goods uh, type of a robotic solution? What impact would that have on my operation? Would it improve? Would it create bottlenecks? Would it create risks in safety or quality that I need to account for? How can I play those different scenarios out in a simulated fashion <coughs> to make faster decisions and evolve in a more real-time basis, but most importantly, to still do so in a risk-managed fashion where I have a more predictable outcome and where I can more confidently move forward with evolving my supply chain? The final piece of, the, of our critical capabilities is really focused on the worker, or maybe better to say the human community that surrounds the WMS. Whether your operation is heavily automated or very lightly automated, the truth is people still make up a critical component of what it means to be successful in supply chain. We still have warehouse managers, we still have supply chain executives, we still have floor workers. Even in the dark warehouse of the future, people will still be a, a relevant and critical component of what the supply chain looks like. And as a result, warehouse management solutions are absolutely focused on providing the right capabilities to engage with that, wor that workforce, with the humans that surround your operation, and to ensure that those people are engaged and are finding the value that they're looking for. That's doubly critical, again, as we talk about the macro trend, uh, wherein people are less and less inclined to work in supply chain. It's increasingly difficult to find, to train, and to retain the right talent pool to grow our business. And as a result, the technologies that WMSs can provide to really provide the right user experience is critical. One part of that is visibility and connectivity. What is a WMS doing to engage the user community by providing the right access to data, the right visibility both to internal user communities on what's going on and also external user communities? How is the WMS fostering your distribution channel and understanding current material uh, position? How is it uh, fostering the right conversation with your, your direct consumer and understanding the disposition of an order and the readiness for shipping of an order or the point at which the customer can no longer request changes to that order? <coughs> and ultimately, how is it doing then to connect your entire ecosystem or your, your uh, user community together to understand the, the flow of goods from point of purchase to point of consumption? Increasingly, uh, the users are also, though, expecting next generation user experiences. It wasn't too long ago when we thought of Telnet as the principal way that a floor worker might engage with a WMS. These days, with millennials and Gen Z uh, emerging into the workforce, we see a different set of expectations. Generations that grew up on native mobile applications, that grew up on technologies like Alexa or Siri, uh, they, their, their expectation is different. The expectation of native mobile enablement is, is, is clearly the de facto standard now uh, for the floor worker. Increasingly, voice technologies are the de facto standard for how workers would like to perform their day in and day out taskings. And, and it, it, surprisingly, we're starting to see to, uh, the uptake of things like vision-based technologies as, again, the emerging workforce grows up on technologies focused on augmented reality and other more modern technologies. Now, why is that important? 
it's both important in the productivity sense because those technologies offer the opportunity to rethink process flows and to think differently about how we push productivity into the workforce. But it's, it's quite clear that that also is about employee satisfaction. And studies have shown that satisfied employees are productive employees, but satisfied employees are also employees that stay. And when we, when we talk about the issue with finding, training, and retaining talents, Anything the Technology Foundation, the WMS can do to make our work environment more engaging for the end employee and convincing them to stay is a value creator for the operation. The final piece of, of this critical capability is, is the focus on analytics. Analytics at the core of a WMS is increasingly an expectation of the market. And the reason is very simple. As the workforce becomes more scarce and as the operation becomes more dynamic and complex, the need for analytics that not only stand beside the warehouse management and provide good insight and understanding of what's going on, but sit at the core of the operation and provide things like actionable analytics, the ability to, to deeply integrate analytic solutions with the operational solutions of the WMS, become the way that we think about increasing productivity and connecting observation of a problem that needs to be fixed with the ability to take action on that problem, solve that problem, and create an opportunity uh, for operational excellence. And Tom, I think that that concludes our critical capabilities as we think about the modern WMS. Fantastic. Well, thank you for all that, Sean.